Welcome to part four of this five part series where I am reflecting on one of my videos back in July where I was not feeling very good after my ADHD diagnosis and I am going through in this series and talking about how my self-esteem is rebuilt and today with a particular focus on self-efficacy, like how can you feel good about yourself and capable in what you're doing. So I left you on the last video about to detail something that I wanted you to let go of. Since then, actually just as I was about to launch into it, my camera battery died. Uh, and so I have spent the time editing the first part in eating my lunch and now the sun has moved and um, How will we deal with the tide of the times of nature? I don't know Plunged into darkness. It's either one or the other isn't it? Isn't that a metaphor? Bright sunshine or the darkest depth of man? I would also just like to comment, because you know I like to give you the behind the scenes as I'm going, that um, I'm not really taking my medication very much at the minute. I haven't taken it for over a week. Today is the first day that I have. And I'm just going to put it out there. The second portion of this video is brought to you by Concerto XL, because I don't think there is any chance having dealt with the frustration of my battery dying and then having to pick up where I left off, like two hours later, that this would be happening. So, serves a purpose, it serves. Purpose, the purpose it serves. Okay, right, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing again. I'm no longer gonna put myself in situations that don't work for me anymore I'm no longer gonna force myself to do things that don't work for me anymore But in that you have to reconcile The part of you that doesn't want to let go of being Who you think you should be and who you've learned that you should be. Whoa, 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 whoa Okay, so the thing that I wanted to say to you around this is first of all let go, right? I, the process that I'm talking about there of like letting go of who you thought you were or were supposed to be or whatever it is, let it go. Because the space that you will create in your life when you stop occupying so much of your time on that is phenomenal. Um, and related to this, sorry, I'm distracted by the fact I want to move, so I will just move. <laughs> um, related, and it relates to all of this. I've forgotten what I've just said, for goodness sake. I think I might be becoming in intentionally fatigued, my friends. <laughs> okay, third time's a charm. And the thing that made me recognize it as shame before I'd kind of put it into those words is that I've had so many conversations with people over the last couple of months where I feel like I'm stuck in a problem that I'm trying to solve about what I do next in my life that seems really straightforward, but I'm stuck on it. And it's that sense of hopelessness, right? And I keep coming back to this thing that I think people find really hard to hear and I find hard to say, um, which is, but if I wasn't me, it wouldn't be a problem. So I'm the problem. Yes, so there's the letting go. And I, when, I, when I look at myself now, back in this situation, it kind of seems pretty obvious to me it's really hard for you to feel a sense of um, fulfillment and self-efficacy when you're constantly doing stuff that you don't feel good at, right? Like, and this was my problem. The main reason why I feel so different now to what I did before is because I get to choose what I do in my day and I get to fill it with things that I know that I am good at because I have learned to be good at over the last five or ten years or whatever. It's bloody sun. Right, and I was I joked about this with my friends where I was like watching the Super Bowl, Rihanna's performance at the Super Bowl, and I had this moment where I was like, nobody gives a fuck if Rihanna can create a project plan. Nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> She's so good at what she does in the lane of what she does. But if like me, you've you've come up through the corporate world, which I actually didn't even. I was a primary school teacher for two years, which is which is a whole other thing because you're not at a desk all day, it's very different. So somehow I'd managed to get lost, I'd lost sight in the five years that I was in like a corporate office -y type job. Um, that you kind of have to, there's a lot of shit that you gotta do in your day that you don't feel very good at or that you struggle with. That's okay if the ratio is, you know, 30% stuff that's hard and struggles you struggle with, but 70% feelings of fulfilled, right? And you gotta play around with that ratio. But my point is, like the tides of emotional chaos, I will not let the passing of clouds and this sun situation stop me from finishing this point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> that I've waited two hours to be able to make because of the camera. Okay, my key message 
is, if you are spending your days with probably more than 60, 70% of the stuff that you have to do being stuff that you find hard and it doesn't bring you fulfillment and joy and that because of ADHD is particularly challenging for you, then no wonder you feel like shit, right? <laughs> no wonder you feel like shit. I think I've made my point. Let's let's continue. I need to calm myself down. I keep, uh, okay. <sighs> People find really hard to hear and I find hard to say, um, which is, but if I wasn't me, it wouldn't be a problem. So I'm the problem. So I need to deal with it. Right? And that is probably the, the crux, the thread through the core of how I was feeling at this time, which, which had trapped me in a prison of my own making. I just need to be better at it. If I wasn't so bad at this, then it wouldn't be a problem. So I don't deserve to feel the way I feel. So I should just deal with it. Right, it's fucked. It's a fucked cycle. It is this complete weight of responsibility. And I've always had this issue. And I think this is what will hopefully help with it. It's like, I always feel a complete weight of responsibility that like everything that I feel and think and do is my responsibility to fix or change or like just get right. I don't know, but it's this real sense that I have at the moment that's leading to this hopelessness where whenever I have a problem, I can't just see it as an objective, like, okay, then we fix it this way because I have this whole visceral and I feel it as I talk about it. That's why it's like the, it's like a shade, a sh shame cloud that just radiates from within everywhere that feels like, but if I wasn't me, it wouldn't be a problem. So I am the problem. I'm gonna take this opportunity to share two pieces of advice, right? Because you might be in a position right now where you're like, all very well and good, Rach, can't just quit my job. Got bills to pay, got family to feed, got things, right? Okay, firstly, I will encourage you to challenge that mindset because that's what I would have said at this point. And actually the possibilities were there for me. I just refused to let myself see them because I didn't wanna be a burden and an inconvenience, right? So first of all, just interrogate that a little bit. Secondly, that may very well be true for you. You can't just jump out and quit your job, get out of the situation, I get it. So two things that strike me as I watch myself back here. The first one is, stop discussing it with people that don't understand. If you want out, if you're not happy there, if you're feeling unfulfilled, some people genuinely just do not get it. They don't understand the specific experience of the restlessness that ADHD creates in us to want to move on from a job, right? I wanna put my sunglasses on, but I feel like I'm gonna look like a massive dickhead as I try and make this point. <laughs> Stop discussing the problem with people that don't get it. Um, Cause all they will do through no fault of their own, just human nature is project their own view of the world and thought process and biases and emotions onto you. And if you're not feeling emotionally resourceful enough to be able to deal with that and contain that, you will internalize it as the reasons why, oh yeah, I can't ha have what I want. I'm just looking for a perfect life. Like I should just be able to deal with this job. I should just be able to put up with it. I, you know, I, the money's good. Like all of those logical reasons that make sense, but like, that's not what, that's not where we're at, right? Um, it will pile on top of the shame. So stop talking to people about it that don't get it. And secondly, find, just one person, whether it's a friend, a family member, somebody in this comment section, somebody online, a community, but at least one person who you can talk to about it that understands and that will validate you. And not that they have to like blow smoke up your ass and tell you that anything is possible, but just completely understand like, like I understand how you're feeling or I respect how you're feeling. Let's try and find a way out of this. And thirdly, do something Ideally every day, if not put it into your week, that just makes you feel good. Do it because it excites you, because it interests you, because you want to, with no expectation, with no goals, with no metrics, with no like, this is to lead me out of this career. Just do it because it feels good. And I promise you that is the starting point because you will not be able to overcome this sense that like you're not good enough and can't do stuff if you don't have something to cling on to that makes you feel like a capable and fulfilled person. I'm constantly told by people not to be so hard on myself. And this is where it becomes kind of meta. <laughs> you kind of have shame about the shame because 
I feel like I am trapped in a cage of my own making. And people will say, don't be so hard on yourself. Why are you so hard on yourself? Look at all the amazing things that you do. Look at amazing things that who you are. I have people in my life that love me, that will say to me, you do know that I love you because of these aspects of you, not in spite of, right? Amazing. I don't believe it right now. I believe it now. Just gonna put it out there. And part of that is to what I've just said to you, right? It's hard to believe it in yourself if there aren't examples in your day of where you feel like you are not even just thriving, but just coping with stuff as a starting point. And, and enjoying yourself. Being told, don't be so hard on yourself, is frustrating because it's like, I know, I know, but I didn't, I'm not, I don't choose to feel this.